Amen. The word today is called tough choices. Tough choices. How to make tough choices. In this moment of history, it's important that we understand the importance of making tough choices. Hallelujah. There was a man once who was the gatekeeper for a bridge that had to let a ship through at a certain time, but on top of the bridge was a train line that had to let a train through at other times. And whenever a ship is passing, it was his job to lift the bridge so the ship could pass through. Whenever the train was coming, it was his job to let down the bridge so the train could pass through. And there was this time when he was on the job and his son came with him. And why there was a big lever that he would use to let down the bridge. He heard the sign that the train was coming, but the bridge was up. The train was coming with hundreds of people. There was a specific time when it was his job to pull down the lever and let the bridge down so the train would pass through. It so happened that after he heard the train and he was getting ready to let down the lever to let the train through when he looked down into the machinery that would let down the bridge who he saw he saw his son in order for him to let down the bridge when he pulled down the lever his son would be killed in the machine room he had a tough choice to make he could save his son or save the train. It was a very hard choice. He looked down in the machine room where the lever worked. And he decided, I have to save the train. And he made that difficult decision. He made a tough choice. And he pulled down the lever, crushed his son to death, and let the train through. And as the train passed and he felt all that got wrenching feeling even though he had done well. He saw as the train passed by and the people were laughing and they were happy as if nothing was done to let them through. Ladies and gentlemen, that was a tough choice. A tough choice. Is not a choice necessarily between good and bad. But it is a choice between good and better. Or a choice between better and the best. I want you to follow me. We are living in a time when it's going to be necessary to make tough choices. You will never be able to excel in this age without tough choices. No longer is Satan trying to get the child of God to do wrong. For he can hardly get you to do wrong. But he get you to make wrong choices. He get you afraid of making tough choices. We are now in the midst of an election in the USA where they are getting ready to choose a president. It doesn't mean that one is a thief and one is honest. But there must be a choice as to who will best fit your evaluation as a good president. Amen. Are you there? Yes. You can't say, well, I cannot make that choice. You have got to make a choice. Both are nearly the same. Amen. 
But there has to be a choice. The government may make a decision to do something important at the cost of another thing. In order to feed the poor, they may have to stop the, 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 the making of a new library. There is nothing wrong with the making of that library, but there is a more important cause for the poor. Are you there? And that politician may decide to feed the poor, but those who would benefit from the library would attack and say, well, he has forgotten us. But that politician had to make a tough choice. God says in this age, in this time of conclusion, in this moment of history, ladies and gentlemen, who God has called to do great work, get ready for tough choices. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Many of you will face tough choices this very year. Yes. Hallelujah. If you make them, you will succeed greatly. Praise God. This year, many will make choices that will bring life to others. It will bring death to others. It will bring damnation to some. Hallelujah. But there's a great blessing. In the midst of tough choices, God provides answers. Amen, amen. There is always a biblical command to tough choices. Sometimes you may be tempted to burn your brain about something that are beyond you. And many people who lose their mind, they face tough choices. Yes. They were not bad people. They face tough choices. It, it wouldn't be hard for that man after he had saved the train with, with maybe a thousand people would for life every night in his sleep he would see when he crossed his son and not one soul on the train knows him by name. Not one person on the train will send him a card. He faced the tough choice of saving a thousand over his son. Ladies and gentlemen, get ready for those tough choices. There are generally three types of choices. Permanent choices, temporary choices, and occasional choices. I'm talking about tough choices. How to make tough choices choices you cannot mature in God or in your own life without making tough choices that will sometimes be unpopular how to make tough choices concerning matters like your children your home your partner your parents your employment your vocation in life, your church, your recreation, your transportation, all these ingredients are in the pot. But the fact that they are in the pot is not sufficient. Anybody there? Go ahead, go ahead, yes. They are there, alright. You've got a mother, you've got a job, yes. you've got a husband, or you may be single. You've got a vehicle, you've got a home, etc., etc. They are all ingredients in your life. But God has revealed to me that one of the major problems upon the earth, we have all the ingredients, but they are jumbled. Come on now, go ahead. Anybody understand jumbled? Yeah. The children in school, you get those words where they are jumbled. Then it's your job to organize the words. Why they are jumbled even though all the words are in, all the letters are involved. It has no use. Come on, come on. If you give me the letters O, G, and D. When 
is OGND, it has no use. The same letters will also give you the word DOG. But the same letters will also give you the word GOD. Come on, somebody. Come on, somebody. So why the ingredients are there in your life? Well, I, I, I've got children. I've got a car. I've got a job. <laughs> well, i got different decisions to make. Yes, you have them all. But you have it jumbled. Yes. Are you hearing me? God says it's time to make tough choices. God says you can't have all these ingredients on the same level. How to make tough choices. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Tough choices. In order to make these tough choices. Oh, you've got the old GD in your life. But you want G-O-D. Hallelujah. You've got the O. You've got the G. And you've got the D. You don't want the D-O-G. You want the G-O-D. It means therefore that you have got to reorder. Come on now. Come on now, Richard. Go ahead. Hallelujah. You've got to reorder. Hallelujah. The letters in your word. Amen. You've got to reorder the ingredients in your lovely life. Ha! Yes. Ah, when you're having things going good for you, and you can't understand why there can be no breakthrough, there is a disorder in your life. And God said, number one, you've got to reorder. Your agenda according to the Bible. Amen. How to make tough choices. Ruth had every reason to go back home. Oh, hallelujah. She had every reason to abandon her mother-in-law. Without being seen as wicked. But the Bible said. She put all the ingredients together. And made a tough choice. Are you hearing me? I can go back to a place. Where they all know me. Oh hallelujah. But I'm going to go to the place. Where they know God. Are you hearing me somebody? And Ruth said. Mother-in-law, I know I've got good reason to go back home. There ain't nothing wrong with that. But that ain't the best. That may be good, but I want better. That may be better, but I want the best. And she said, Mama, entreat me not to leave thee, nor to return from falling up the deep. Mama, I'm coming. Even if you don't want me to come, I make the decision. Hallelujah. For we are the goest, I will go. We are the largest, I will lodge. Hallelujah. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, if I can't get a hotel, I'm going to be with you. If I'm sleep in a manger, I'm going to be with you. I'm making a tough choice, mother-in-law. If you have no money, I'm going to be with you. If you have no job, I'm going to be with you. If they come against you, I'm going to be with you. Anybody hearing me? I'm talking about tough choices. God says we order the ingredients of your life. God said in Psalm 119 verse 133. So 
order my steps according to thy word. Titus 1 verse 5. For this cause left I thee in Crete that thou shalt set in order the things that are wanting. My God. My God. In Psalm 27 verse 23. Said the steps of good men are ordered by the law. Tough choices, ladies and gentlemen. Tough choices. Tough choices. The men who are rich, the men who have done great in business, they have, they have made tough choices. Some of them mortgage their home. Hallelujah. Hey! Some of them sold all they had. And took the risk. Come on, somebody. Amen. Tough choices. We order your agenda according to the Bible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And before I go to number two, how to make tough choices, I'm going to attempt to give you a little help in making this order. How many people have things in your life that sometimes you don't, you don't understand which one is more important? They are put into a spot. They got something to do today. Several, they are all good things to do. But you can't do them all. Come on. And you have got to do some. Anybody ever been in that spot? You've got to make some decisions. No matter what. Don't, if you try to do all, you will lose your mind. That's what's wrong with the world. We try to do everything. Come on, somebody. But you want to do those things according to order. Somebody praise the Lord. Somebody praise the Lord. And let me attempt to give you just a little order of things. It, can't, it won't include everything. Neither is it a complete order. Neither is it a comprehensive order, but it's an order to help to send you into the word. God said, reorder your agenda according to the Bible. Hallelujah. And the first in God's order is God. Hallelujah. Praise God. Are you a doctor? And ain't got God. Are you a teacher? And you haven't got God? Are you a carpenter? Doing well. And you ain't have God. What are you doing? Don't you see many doctors are committing suicide? There's something wrong. Mr. Doctor, you know what you are going through? Even though you're a doctor, you have contemplated suicide sometime. Mr. Taximan, Mr. Musician, you know you have done so. Why? Even though I'm such a good person, you have got your life in disorder. Oh, I take care of my children. Oh, I pay my bills. Oh, I help people. Your life, even though you do good, is in disorder. Let me tell you how to get your life in order. You've got to start with God. Let me hear somebody say God. Let me hear somebody say God. And this God I'm talking about is not Allah. This God I'm talking about is not Confucius. Neither Mr. Moon. Uh, Neither Rasta that they call Haile Selassie. Neither Mohammed. Neither the cow of India. Neither the stones that they make. Hallelujah. Ladies and gentlemen, to make tough choices in your life, you've got to, to, to start with the God of gods. The king of kings. But Isaiah said. In Isaiah 7. And verse 14. A virgin. Hallelujah. Shall be 
a son. Hallelujah. And now shall call his name Emmanuel. Is Jesus Christ the King of Kings? Is not the descendant of David like Elasi? You say Elasi is. He is the root. Oh my God. Of David. You want to make tough choices. You have got the reward. Hallelujah. You're alive. You've got to start with God. And if somebody say God, oh, you don't believe me? He says in Matthew 6 33, he says, Seek, hallelujah, he fasts the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all other things shall be added unto you. I understand, oh Lord, Mr. Archaeologist, Mr. Scientist, why your life is so messed up, even though you are in the laboratory doing so well, finding all the chemicals to help the sick bodies, but yet still you are shaken, you can't sleep in the night. Oh my God, God says you need to get your life in order, you need to start with God. What the Bible says in Jeremiah 8 and verse 9, the wise men are ashamed. They are taken. They are dismayed because they have rejected the word of the Lord and the wisdom that is in it. Oh, Mr. Educator, Mr. Wise Man, you need God. The Bible says in Proverbs 26 and verse 12, seest thou a wise man in his own conceit. There is more hope for a fool than him. You need God for the Bible says in Proverbs 20 and verse 24, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his own way? Well, the Bible said in Jeremiah 10 and verse 23, the ways of man is not in itself to direct his step. For the Bible said in Proverbs 16 and verse 3, commit thy works unto the Lord and thy thoughts shall be established. For the Bible said in Proverbs 3 verse 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean on thine own understanding in all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy path you need to reorder your life Mr. Painter you need to reorder your life Mr. Garbage Man you need to reorder your life Miss Nurse Mr. Teacher Mr. Bus Driver you need God And after God, you need a vocation. God told Adam, by the sweat of your brow, you shall eat bread. Yes. You need to have a vocation. A vocation is your profession in life. It may be a job, but it may be more than a job. You need a vocation. I'm talking about the ordinary. After God in your life, you need a vocation. And God says, if a man does not work, he should not be fed. Are you there with me? The Bible said a man who does not feed his family, no matter how much a preacher he is. Come on, Mr. Preacher Man. He's an infidel. I'm giving you the order now. I'm trying to explain why your life ain't totally together. It starts with God. Then you must have a vocation. You must have a plan in life not to depend on somebody. Young man, you can't be a parasite. 
You can't depend on your mama. Oh my, you ain't, you ain't hear these things in, in the pulpit. You can't depend on your grandmother. Come out of your mother's cabinet. Amen. Young man, you need a vocation. You started college and left college, go back. Young ladies also. You have a trade. You haven't done anything to work on it. Just sit down. You need ambition. Go get a certificate in that trade. My God. Upgrade your skills. Do a course. You can't go to college, do a correspondence college. You're going to be miserable later. I'm talking to you as God is talking to me. You're going to be miserable later. You must have a challenge working on. Each time you reach A, you must see the next step. You're working towards it. You can't be wasting time. I ain't studying at some time. Doing something, unless you're resting. You're doing something to move it to the next ladder. Because the next attack is coming at you at where you were. <laughs> and even though you beat it the last time, the reason why you beat it is because you attacked me. You come here, you came to where you were before that. In order for you to win, you gotta move from where you are. The devil ain't understand the spirit. So it's coming back after you, the same place. Come on, somebody. Avocations, number two. Anybody got in the praise here? Anybody got in the praise? Avocation. Every one of you gotta have an ambition for a vocation. Amen. I don't care what it is here. Even if you get married or you're unmarried, you've got to have a vocation. You got to work. You got to develop yourself. If you go on unchallenged, you are like a lamb to the slaughter. You can't go and trip and there is no money out. Oh my Lord Jesus. You can't be in recreation and the bank book is low. You've got to be responsible. If you lose a job for a month, you can't afford to have no money. Most Christian people only depend on God when God specializes in the impossible. God informs us to develop ourselves. Those men who build the tabernacle of all, they were skilled tradesmen. They weren't cobblers. They were professionals. They were trained. Are you hearing me? Those of you who feel a calling to become a pastor, don't wait for somebody to raise you up. Go to college. Go to Bible college. If you are raised up before you know what to do, you pride will come. God shall lay, lay hands suddenly on no man. Oh, I want to be a pastor. What are you doing? Come on, preacher. I ain't getting enough time to preach. Get a certificate. Go study. Later on, God going to give you a church. Oh my God. All right, that. Get your life in order. Start with God. Get a vocation. Lazy man. Get a vocation. But can't get a job. Get something and sell it. And get plumbing on it. I know a man in Jamaica who sell watermelon on the roadside if you ever see his car. Number three, order. God, vocation. Three, partner. Talking about the order. But as you grow up, even a child. From age 12 onwards, you must be working towards a vocation. That's why your kids better study, 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 study. Amen. Number three is your partner. Sometime as you develop yourself. Amen. Is a partner. For those who are single, your partner is always the Lord. And you have the same relationship or better. And with a physical partner. Amen. Come on, somebody. So, 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 so you're better off for you. You get a time to be with God twice. You know, hear me? 
I say God as God, then a vocation, then God again as a partner. Amen. You got to work with me. I'm in the spirit right now, so come with me. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! The next in line after God and your vocation is a partner. Is not your mother. Is not your father. Is not your children. Is not your dog. For some of you in the West. I know what I'm talking about. I was reading a, a, I was reading a newspaper article coming from England. And a newspaper article it says that the dogs are better than women as a partner. Because they give no problem. And they wonder not about a third party. So I know what I'm talking about. The number three in order is your talking about the number three in order is your partner let me ever say partner God is forever partner is for life anybody with me who God has joined together oh somebody better work with me may as well let no man put asunder if your mother and your father and your children and your partner are drowning in the river and you have only one rope who would you throw it out to both so you would throw it out to your children or your mother some of you your dog i'm coming with you if you get what i'm telling you here things gonna get reordered in your life that's why your life's so messed up you're working so hard and you can't understand things can't come together because your life is in this order the rope should be for your partner I'm talking about tough choices here. I didn't say it is easy. You are doing well on the easy choices. You know which truck to buy, which street to walk, and which school to go. But you ain't handling the tough choices. That's why you ain't making it. My God. It is the tough choices that will bring you somewhere. It is the tough choices that will make you mature. It is the tough choice that will make you have victory and be successful. Oh. Oh, you mean my boy? Oh, yeah. You have to leave him out for your partner. No child must cause a quarrel between you and your partner. Tell the child, go away and leave my husband, child. Go away and leave my wife, child. You're with me, somebody. Some of you choose your mother, your children over your partner. That's why your life messed up. The Bible said, he never say you and your mother are one. Show me that in the Bible. Show me, show me. Come on, come on. Let me hear it. it. Mr. Disobedient, let me hear it. Mr. Rebel, let me hear it. I'm waiting, I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Show me the one between your parents and you. Say you are one. He said, you and your partner are one. Let me say one. Let me say one. one. The others come next. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship God. <laughs> Tough choices. He said, we're in a man to leave mother and father. Go we'll cleave to his wife. Yes. Hear this. The Bible says, young man, be joyful with your wife of your youth. But this is your only portion in life. Yes. See? Some of you call your wife of a little fault. You can't deal with it. Get yourself together. That is your portion. Oh my God. I say all in German you're going to have. You're trying something else for. 
gone to play games, computer games. God said, your enjoyment ain't going to be your partner in this life. That's why you're so messed up. You're looking for enjoyment in other places. My God. Ah! I'm talking about God's order. It begins with God, then your vocation, then your partner. Some of you are going to treat your partner better after we are through today. Because any time, any time your life is out of order, I know what's a problem. I don't see it, but God sees it. And those of you who want to choose a partner, it's very important. After you have chosen God, you've chosen your job. And it's time to choose. Don't play with that choice there. You got to choose somebody you love God bad. I can't finish this. You got to choose somebody who recognize the opposite sex highly. There are some people who, who think the opposite sex is so low. I'm helping you here. You must find out if your partner recognizes the other sex highly. If they're in, into, into the, what they call male bonding, which I don't believe in, or into women's lib are you there right. are you going to have a problem later you ain't going to have it for the first two years but when they reach eight years you're going to have a problem i'm talking to you you write me down write it when it begin to happen they must highly recognize the opposite sex they must highly regard marriage they just don't want to get married for a promotion and a new opportunity they highly regard marriage Amen. but they must fear God bad they must be afraid that if they look at another man like they're going to strike them and kill them that, that, that's a girl they must look for look for the man who trembles he see another woman I can't say nothing to her some of you are looking for the flamboyant and the skillful been working with me amen you must fear god yes. some of your choices messed up you need somebody up. let me tell you something i'm gonna shock you i'm gonna shock all of you <laughs> if six of them fear god they can close your eye and, and pick one Are you bothering yourself? Hallelujah, my God. I know this one going to hit the newspaper. Glory to God. Because they fear God. She may not be all that pretty. Hallelujah. But she fear God. Oh, somebody worship God. <laughs> he may not all be handsome. But he fear God. When his pastor tell him to make it up, he run God to make it up. Yes. He don't rebel when the pastor say, hey, work it out. He don't care what happened yesterday. Pastor said, we must work it out. My God. That's who you must take. Tough choices. The order, God. Then vocation and a partner. You must choose a partner who give easily. Who complain seldom. Satisfied easily. We love you unconditionally. Somebody praise God. So you have God. Then you have somebody help me. A vocation. Somebody help me. And you have a partner. Then you have your children. Children is a heritage of the Lord. Blessed is he that have a quiver full of them. You can't put your parents before your children. I tell you, we got things messed up here. Let me tell you, if your parents got everything right, they will not have to be depending on you so much. I got news. I don't care what I, I, I don't care what is already set in the world. I, I come as a servant of God and speak to you. The reason why they, they have to lean on you is because they didn't have their life in order. 
get with me somebody let me tell you something your your, your, your nuclear family you know what's a nuclear family husband the wife and the children it's a nuclear family nobody come before that no mother no father no grandfather no uncle come before that everybody come up to that get your life in order god vocation hallelujah partner hallelujah children then after your children you've got your parents come on somebody then you got your friends are you there then you got your choice of a home are you there you can't choose a home over your partner nor your children in with me and some of you want to go live at a place with a beautiful home. And there ain't no help for your children there. There ain't no good school. Come with me. You ain't working with me because some of you are not in that problem, but I'm talking to you. You're planning for a home. Oh, I have, I have to get a house. I've got to buy a house. Even if when you get the house, you lose your children, lose your husband, lose your wife, lose everything. But I got to get that house down there. It's very cheap and beautiful. You can say, hey, you know, I own a home, you know. I'm talking, I'm helping you here. When you're making that decision, you must first think about my partner. And number two, my children. Think about my vocation. Ah, a beautiful home, but I, I got to give up my good job. I'm earning $500 per week. I'm going to take 200 so I can say, hey, you see my title here? <laughs> but I didn't see a salary. It's now $200. You with me, somebody. I'm, I'm helping you. If you, if you get this, it's going to help you. It's good to have a home. But it can't be at the top of the order. Somebody worship God. Stand everybody. Time is gone. Time is gone. I'm only gone 5%. Amen. I've got a lot, a lot, a lot. Amen. How to make tough choices. Number one, reorder your life according to God's order. And it begins with who? God. Come on, somebody. Then it next it goes to what? The vocation. Come with me. Then your partner. Come on. Then your children. Then your parents. Are you there? Then your friends and relations. Then your home. Come on. Then you get into another category called the necessities. The necessities and the priorities are not the same. Are you there? Food. What food should I eat? Which road should I walk on? What this, what that. They call it necessities. But we must get our priorities right. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. Hallelujah. God says it's going to be important for you to make those tough choices. He says in Isaiah 65 12, when I speak, he did not hear, but did either before mine eyes and did choose. Hear this that wherein I delighted not. Hallelujah. How many are ready to make tough choices this year? Come on. You're not a yellow belly. You know what yellow belly is? A yellow belly during the, the war times. During the cowboy times, he would come with a gun and he would shoot in the back without you seeing. But the man who was on a yellow belly, he would say, turn around. He said, get your gun. I may live, I may die. Hallelujah. But we're going to have it out. And they say, one, two, three. The first one who draw, he kills. But if you live, come on somebody, you're the victor. I'm coming to you. There are decisions that are going to come before you. Then you're going to have much to lose. Ah! But you cannot say, I will not make a decision. For God said, he that wavereth is like the sea. Is 
said that never mind that will always fail. Why can't you do great up to now? You have only taken on the easy choices. You have not made the tough choices. Glory to God. How many of us here today are ready to make tough choices? Bob your heads in prayer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's some of us today who need to get our order right. You've got to have God. The Bible says in Matthew 6 33, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all other things. All other things. Oh, hallelujah. <laughs> Shall be added unto you. Are you here today and you're not saved? Get your life in order. You're going to start with the Lord. Are you here today and somehow your life does not reflect God at the center? Oh, when something in your life you have given up God, you have, you have given up the church, you have given up your ministry, something in your life you do not have the right order as we have just spoken it. It's jumbled. Oh, I am a good person, but the things in my life are jumbled. I do not have them according to God's order. God told Titus in Titus 1 and verse 5, Titus, I send you to set in order those things that are wanting there are things in your life which are wanting because it needs order oh pastor i've got all of them ah uh, yes i got all of it because it needs order it needs order hallelujah those of us who are here today And you can feel with the preacher as he speaks. Somehow, he's talking to me. I've got all the ingredients, yes. But somehow they are jumbled. They're not in order. I'm going to ask if you'll come and we're going to pray for you. Look, I tell you something. The things that are about to happen right now, if you don't have the right order in your life, you're going to mess up on your decisions. Hallelujah. Glory to God. The things coming right now, they are going to be so serious. Hey! Glory to God. The challenges that are coming right now, they are going to be so serious. It's going to be important. Hallelujah. To have your life in order. According to God's order. Have you been giving up God for other things? Have you been giving up church for other things? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You need to come. Oh my God. God gave me this word and it took me many days to put it together. It ain't an easy word. Because this is dealing with people's lives and their future. It's very real. I've gone only 5% of all the things that the Lord has shown me and revealed to me. He said, don't be satisfied now because you're doing so well. It says, listen to me, there are some rough decisions coming. You can't run away from it. If you make the right decision, you're going to be great. <laughs> if you run away, you'll always be defeated. Hallelujah. My God. God said there are some choices that are permanent, some temporary. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Some occasional. And God says, reorder, first of all. Reorder those ingredients. My God. Hallelujah. Somebody worship God. Somebody worship him. Somebody worship him. This is very important right now. The, Lord, the Holy Spirit is ministering to me right now. They say, this is very important. It's very important. And he says, after you reorder, he says, next thing, take what's available quickly. Amen. He said, quickly, secure what's available. There's some things which will not remain. Oh my God. He says, secure it quickly. 
is something that you might be tempted to wait on. And later when you want it, it's going to be less because it's securing. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He said, number three, he said, adjust. He said, if you lose the best, take the next. My God, don't kill yourself. Don't kill yourself. Trying to go to India to get that thing done. He says, if you lose the best, take the next. Make an adjustment. You don't have the job that you'd always wanted to, be, to have from your child. You're in a job that you don't like so much. But maybe the salary is reasonable. Work on it. Develop yourself in it. Advise yourself to do more courses. Build up yourself in it. Make adjustment. The next thing God says, he said, Tari, if your decision don't need immediate action, don't make it. Somebody may put you in a spot and say, well, do this for me. I'm talking about the Holy Ghost. God says, don't fight them. Just say nothing. But don't make the decision. Don't make it. By the time you're ready to make it, God's going to change the circumstances. He, he, he said, tarry, just tarry and tarry, tarry. And while you're tarrying, he said, pray and fast. Yes. And take counsel. And look in the word. Korabashi. Hallelujah. And he said, some of you are already in a situation. And you are now discovering it's not right. It's not a permanent choice. It's a it was one of those temporary choices. God said, exit! Yeah. Jesus, my God. Some of you started down into a pit. My God, that looks bright and chirpy. You ain't gone down totally yet. My God, God said, exit! Jesus. Hallelujah! My God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said a while ago? I've just given you much more than what I gave you while I was preaching. I just gave you it. Because the Holy Ghost said you got to give them it. I said reorder your ingredients. I just told you a while ago. Reorder the ingredients in your life. That's number one. And number two, God said secure what should be secured. Secure it. Secure it. Secure it. Some of you are going for a job and it's one job. And, and two of you are going for the job. If you're going for a job, don't take your friend. You will not go for the job. Nobody want to tell you this. You alone go for the job. They're going to choose your friend over you. Amen. Secure it quickly. Number three, you may not get the best, but take the next best. And work on it. Work on it. Work on it. Work on it. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. And God says, there's something don't need immediate attention. Tarry. Don't choose a partner at age 15. Not 17. Drop it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Forget it. Take it out of your mind. It will trouble you. It will trouble your school. Tarry. Keep on praying. Forget it. Tarry. You're not ready yet. Financially, young man. Quit the choosing. Till you're ready. You get confused. When you want to change, you can't change. Number four, some of you may be into some situations. It's not permanent. It's temporary. And if you can exit, get out. Oh my God. Tough choices. Tough choices. Bob your heads in prayer.